things that I don't, I love Marty's preaching. Come on. I was just, I was just teasing him. I, I've been a Christian for over 50 years, and I, as Marty was the most annoying preacher I've ever heard. Woo! I, he liked that. <laughs> I want you guys to know I love my pastor, and I think God has called him to Utah for the days we're living in, and I think we're on the verge of something great, something great going yes. on. And, and I sat there during worship service, and I felt guilty about saying that, even though I was teasing. But I want everybody to know I love my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all take up an offering for Pastor Gary, because that was good. And if you two would like an offering, that's all you got to do right there. No. Connie, yeah. I would like Connie's wife to not stand in for Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Connie and Dwight, uh, this is her brother Dwight. They have a sister in uh, California who's not doing well. And, uh, and uh, many family members, I'm sure, that you have that probably could use... Uh, Jesus, amen. amen. And, and maybe, maybe many have Jesus, or maybe they think they have Jesus. We're not here to decide that, but just to pray and, and believe that they will come to know the Lord. How many have somebody in your family that you could say, "Why don't you come on up to and join us?" Just come. It won't be long, I promise. Just come on up. If you have someone in your family you'd like to come to know who Jesus is, let's just let's just do this and and believe that uh, you know what, you and your whole house shall be saved. Amen. amen. He declares that. That's what his word says. And, and, and I know right now that uh, uh, we all may have loved ones who don't know the Lord or who have at one time known the Lord and maybe aren't walking with him the way that they should. Uh, we'll, we'll just be believing and standing for that. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come together corporately as a body of believers. Lord, we make a declaration here this morning. We're not going to beg. We're not going to plead. We're not going to cry, and we're not going to hope. We're going to declare something this morning because we stand upon your word. Yeah. Lord, we know what the situation is. We know that we have many family members not saved, thinking they are. Uh, we have many family members who have once known you and have fallen away. We have family members who don't want anything to do with you because there's a lifestyle that they've chosen to live. That may be the fact, but the truth is you declared that if we would follow you, serve you, love you with all of our heart, then our whole household would be saved. So we inject the truth into the fact we inject the truth of your word what you spoke Lord we line our faith and our mind up with what you've declared not what the situation Lord if we lived our life by the way our situation dictate we'd be a mess and we know what God We'd be, we'd be just like the lost, going around spreading negativity, Lord, uh, hopelessness. We'd be ca just catering our, 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 our mind and our occupation of our thoughts on bad news all the time. But, Lord, we stand in truth. We stand in glory. And we stand with hope. And we know, God, that if you've done it for us, you'll do it for them because you're no respecter of person. If you saved us, you'll save them. Come on, say that with me. If you saved me, you'll save them. In Jesus' name, Lord, we declare it and we just profess it right now. And we're going to hold fast to that confession of our faith in Jesus' name. Give him praise. Come on. We believe for it. You know who it is you're believing for. And you just, no matter, listen, when you're over their house or you're talking about on the phone or your Facebook and text and email or whatever you do, and all of a sudden that comes up, don't get it caught up in that. Just begin to speak the truth into their life and just begin to counter whatever's going on there. I'm not saying don't go out and publicly rebuke them. I'm not saying that because we don't want to push them further other way but just under your breath or or however you can manage it just bring jesus into the situation that's why we're here amen he says we're here to be light amen we're here to be light for jesus christ so that those in darkness might come to know him uh if you've got a bible you can turn it on or open it up whatever it is that you brought in this morning to luke chapter five uh, i'm going to talk about going deeper and uh deeper in the things of the lord sometimes we go so far and amen, if you can bear witness to this. Sometimes we can go so far, and it feels like that's as far as we can go. We can pray so much, and it feels like that's as much as we can pray because we measure our efforts by our success, don't we? We really do. If we, if we believe it for something, we'll do something as long as you know, that, that faith will hold out. But if God tarries, if God delays... And if he doesn't answer right away, we have a tendency to let the fuel tank run dry of our faith. Come on. Yeah. We have a tendency to not continue down that path of believing and hoping for what it is we're believing and hoping for. Because the circumstances aren't lining up with what our faith is hoping for. Amen. Yeah. That's when you push in. That's when you press in. That's when you go deeper. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. It has been an awesome two weeks. Amen. Yeah. We've tasted the things of God. We've seen supernatural manifestations of his glory. And now here we are going back to life as normal, if you will. And 
And right now, I believe that there are some that are, are probably under some heavy assault trying to steal the joy that you have from these last two weeks of revival, trying to take from you all the things that were deposited in you, trying to puncture a hole in your gas tank of faith so that that can all bleed out, so that you'll just go back to your normal. But I'm deciding for myself, I'm not going back. Can I get an amen? I, that's where the witness comes in. I'm not going back to what we used to be. And what we used to be was nothing really bad. Amen. What we Because where we were before we were used to be was, was, was not that bad. And where we were before where we were before where we used to be, how many, you know, no. come on, we grow from glory to glory. Amen. We go from glory to glory. And I'm not saying that it's bad where we were, but I know that there's something ahead that God wants me to get a hold of. I know there's something deeper that God wants me to understand. That's why we go through everything that we go through is to decide, uh, it, it, I really believe, if we want to go deeper or we don't want to go deeper. In everybody's life, I think we all have to deal with failures. Nobody in here. In my life, I have to deal with failures. I let people down. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Come on. I let God down. I let myself down. Is there anybody in here? Yes. Am I preaching to myself or is there a church in here that can say amen? Amen. Come on, I, you know, I already know the message. I don't got to preach it for me. I'm, I'm here this morning to be an encouragement to you. Amen. I have failed. I have messed up. I have let God down. I have misstepped. I have miscommunicated. I've done things that, that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that God didn't want me to do. And I know that we all get there. I'm here this morning to tell you that's okay. Because God has a plan to take you deeper in your failure. Come on, God has a plan to take you deeper when you struggle. God has a plan when you don't meet the mark. God has a plan to take that mark and somehow bring it to where the two of you collide. I, I, I know that we don't succeed at everything. And, and this is tough in the church today because there are many out there in pulpits across the land preaching a doctrine that once you get Jesus, you're going to succeed at everything you do. Once you get Jesus, come on, you're going to have joy every step of the way. Once you get Jesus, you're going to walk with complete and total peace everywhere you go. Once you get Jesus, darkness is just going to part like the Red Sea so you can walk right on through it. And I'm here to tell you that's not biblical. That is not in the scripture. I see men and women in the word of God who struggled and who failed. But because they had a relationship with Jesus, he took that struggle and he took that failure and he turned it out and worked it for their good. Amen. Amen. What you're going through when you fail, these are merely lessons to teach you your identity and more importantly, his identity. Amen. Amen. I believe that the power of God comes when we fail. Now, I'm not saying, you know, Paul struggled with preaching this. He was preaching grace, and people misunderstood it and said, well, if grace is that powerful, let's just sin and so that grace can be there. He said, no, it's not used as a license. And so what I'm about to say falls in that same category. When you fail, the power of God is ready to come in a mighty way. So should we fail to get the power of God? No, we shouldn't do that. But I want you to understand, Satan's trying to beat you down so that you stop. Satan is trying to defeat you so that you quit getting up. Satan is trying to stop... A, a it was Brooke who was uh, just sick the other day, and, and she just had it was running a fever, real high fever. She was coughing and she all stuffed up, and, and Connie went somewhere, and I'm there, and, and I, I hear her. I, I thought that was her. I hear her <laughs> crying, saying something really loud, and so I run in the bedroom, and I go, what was that? And she kind of embarrassed. She said, nothing. I said, were you yelling at the TV? And she says, no, I was telling God I do believe. Oh, awesome. She was crying out on her bed to get healed. She was crying out on her bed for Jesus to heal her. And she was crying out, I do believe. And you know what? He didn't heal her. You know what that did to us? Because a child with faith like that, that's pure. That's innocent. And he didn't heal her. And now she's wanting to know why. And I don't have the answers. I don't have the answers. But I do know this. That sometimes when you go so far, the devil will try to defeat you. He'll try to hinder that prayer. He'll try to send his cohorts of devils to stop you. Daniel, they did it to Daniel. Uh, Daniel fasted and prayed 21 days. And the answer was sent instantly. But Satan kept it at bay for a while. Sometimes the devil and sometimes God will allow this to take place. To strengthen you. Not to discourage you. Not to defeat your faith. Not to pound it down. That's the way the natural eye would look at that situation. But just the opposite. To get you to go again. To get you to not settle. To get you to say, well, I've been there, done that. I tried that. That didn't work. I know a lot of believers 
believers in church today that have prayed and believed for lost loved ones and they're getting worse and they're getting worse and they're getting worse. So they quit praying for them. Can you see the attack? Can you see the plan that Satan has? Trying to manipulate and get people to stop. But God is wanting you to stand fast. Come on. God is wanting you to stay the course. God is wanting you to not just give in. But when you can't see it with your natural eyes, He's wanting you with your eyes of faith to sit there and confess and believe it. That's the type of person God will take deeper. Come on. That's the type of person that God will give a deeper revelation of who He is and more authority because He knows He can trust you when things don't go the way you think they should. Church is full of spoiled people. Churches are full of people who, who want everything and we want it now. And when we don't get it, we have a tendency to shake our fist at God and get angry at God and walk out of church and blame the pastor, blame the worship team, blame the elders, blame the Sunday school, blame everybody. Yay! Satan wins again. But not today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Not, in this, not in this season. Because God is doing something spectacular. I believe it's in our mistakes where God really, really can demonstrate His power because He says when we are weak, come on. Come on, He is strong. When we're weak, in other words, when we fail, He steps in and does stuff in the supernatural.